Well, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to Bright River Chapel on Sunday, the 7th of May. Um, Mary isn't around today, but we're just for a moment um, going to just share with you something from Psalm 34 that um, I thought it might be interesting for you to have an insight into uh, a bit of uh, a quiet time that I had last week on Psalm 34. So let's just pray and then we'll share something for a few minutes and make this a shorter Bright River Chapel than normal. God bless you, wherever you are, whether you're uh, with us today on Sunday the 7th of May, or whether you're watching this as a recording later on on the YouTube, or live on Facebook, of course. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this brief time together now, as we look together at Psalm 34. Amen. Well, um, in the version I'm reading from, Psalm 34 says that he actually wrote this time, this psalm at a, a time of, of of a real issue. It's it's tagged down biographically when he uh, was on the run from Saul, and uh, he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, the uh, ruler in the Philistine area, um, who drove him away, um, so he was safe. Um, uh, the, from the, by pretending, by deceiving Abimelech, he escaped with his life. And it starts, I will extol the Lord at all times. Well, so David was extolling the Lord, um, even in the difficulty that he faced at that moment. His praise will always be on my lips. And it goes on to say, verse four, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. And later on in this psalm, it says in verse 18, the Lord is close to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. And it finishes, the Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. So um, looking at my quiet time notes, just to get you a, an idea of the kind of stream of thought that goes on uh, as you relate with the Lord. I, I wrote this, Lord, I don't want to grow calloused in who I am in my relationship with you and others. I don't get sometimes what the deal is with human beings, especially between men and women, but with you, one feels one is already so completely known and that you know how to handle me in whatever circumstances are happening. My experience in Psalm 34 has been major. Such a blessing in trials, the promise of your goodness. Taste and see, in verse eight, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So we personalize that, don't we? And we say, we taste and see that you, Lord, are good. And I am blessed along with all those who take refuge in you. There is nothing of goodness outside of you. I am finding winsome ways, our amazingly winsome, whether shared journeys which allow the passing of day to the simple um, question to people at cash tills or queues, how are you doing? A softness and a smile. And then you invite us to learn. You say, come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. That is how to walk in reference to you, in reverence of you. To fear means to respect, to revere. Take seriously what I am saying to you, the wisdom I have for you. We fear you, verse 9, along with all your holy set apart totally other flowing in your ways with you people those who fear you lack nothing you dear one are our anchor and the anchor for everyone on this call he is our anchor 
Verse six, this poor man called and you, Lord, heard, heard me and you have saved me. You have delivered me out of all my troubles, my trials and agonies of life. Verse four, I have sought you, Lord, and you have answered me. You have delivered me from all my fears, cares and anxieties. Lord, you have encamped around me, verse seven, along with all those who fear you. Your angel surrounds me and you deliver us. Radiant, never covered with shame. That is what others try to dump on us. Shame as a permanent way of walking around, a desire to remove us from grace into disgrace with no extension of support, no encouragement, no friendship being offered but treated as one to be kept at a distance and to be approached with disdain. Verse 10, those who seek you, Lord, lack no good thing. And in verse 9, those who fear you lack nothing. An attitude, a habit, a disposition of life. To say, I will extol you, Lord, at all times, verse 1. To tell out your goodness, who you are and what you have done generally, but especially who you are to me, and what you have done in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will glory in you, Lord. Stuff is going on. We can sense the afflictions, the assaults upon us, and on our well-being. My glorying in you, in whatever is going on, causes others to rejoice and to be stirred up to also glorify you and to exalt you together with us. So what is a big life lesson out of this passage, this Psalm of David at a time of extreme pressure, when he felt the only way out was to feign insanity in order to escape Abimelech? Well, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Say it again. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Oh, this is what I find so um, interesting about this life lesson. Even when he had found himself cornered by his choices and his circumstances into actually deceiving Abimelech, lying to Abimelech, his temporary Philistine boss, who was expecting him to do bad things against his own people. And there he is with the life lesson to keep our tongues from evil and our lips from telling lies to turn from evil and to do good. So you can square the circle uh, if you like, but there's an interesting thought there. But which sounds better? The eyes of the Lord, your eyes on us, Lord, in a kindly way, your ears attentive to us, or, Lord, your face against us, well, and determined to blot out our name, well, definitely the former, um, your eyes on us in a kindly way, your ears attentive to us. David's experience and our experience in trouble is that we should cry out to you. And the experience we then have is that, Lord, you hear us. Psalm 34, verse 17. We might have many troubles, but you do deliver us. You do hear us. And you are close to us, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. You protect us down into the detail of every bone in our body. And this is what is difficult to get our heads round. The troubles may include us breaking a leg, and yet you protect us. When we're broken hearted, when we're crushed in spirit, we have you close to us, and saving us, verse 18. We come and we take refuge in you. Rescue your servants, Psalm 34, verse 22. Rescue 
your servants. We have chosen to line ourselves up with you. And we say yes, dear one, yes to you as our Lord. We say yes to fearing you. Well, I hope you found that interesting. And um, I don't know what your um, times with the Lord are like, but it's good to get a notebook sometimes, read your Bible and jot down your prayers and your stream of thoughts. And sometimes if we're heads are going astray or we're busy headed, just in uh, in uh, the side notes, really, uh, just bracket out some must do that or must do this so that it doesn't distract you by some uh, in a major way. If you've got some busy thought in your head, it's best just to note it down and uh, keep your focus on the Lord as you listen to him as well as um, talk to him. Well, let's finish in prayer at this point. Lord, we will extol you at all times. Your praise will always be on our lips. Thank you that you are with us and that you save us out of all our troubles, that you are close to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit. Lord, we lift up any who feel like that today and we pray that we might walk in you, with you with a winsome and thankful heart looking to you in every situation that we find ourselves in. In your precious name, dear Jesus. Amen. Well, it's been nice just to be with you for a moment and uh, God bless you. Next Sunday, we're um, doing a, a, a physical right with a chapel in our local market town as we do a Stories of Hope for an hour. Um, sharing some stories of hope, um, of some nibbles and a, a drink. So we might just touch base on Facebook for five minutes around about 4, 4.15, just to uh, say hi. But our next uh, proper Bright River Chapel will be on the 21st. So uh, see you later and uh, you have a good week, wherever you are now. God bless you.